Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Best interest of the EU. Uh, if, if they actually Brexit, it's in the best interest of the people. And if it gets scuttled, which it looks like internally, that's what's happening. It's against the will of the people. It's it's obviously in favor of the EU. Yeah. I mean, EU right now, I mean, they're making threats that, you know, you need to accept this. You need to accept this. And every time I hear a central banker or an organization or government make threats that you have to do something, to me, that's not in the best interest of the people that they, they're forcing them to do something that they don't want to, you know, that the people don't want. Right. And I would add that. If if the Brexit is is denied, what you Britain in London probably be multiples of what's happened in Paris. In uh, France, the protests are just unbelievable right now. The yellow vests. I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of people, and I see Macron. He's trying to calm the situation down by giving tax relief and things like that. But it looks like the yellow vests are rejecting this. I mean, what do you think their motivation is now? Well, first off, uh, by Macron hiking wages and lowering, uh, lowering taxes pretty much has now called their credit rating out. Uh, so you are seeing CDS rates expand expand higher and you're seeing their their bond market weaken um i think it's interesting i i'm not sure if you saw it or not but did you see how many of the yellow vests have either a big q on the front or q sent me or whatever uh there yes. was also yeah and there was also uh you had had chance with tens of thousands of people for Trump. So populism is spreading. And I mean, obviously, you, you need to view that as a good thing because it means the bankers are losing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's spreading. And I think other countries are going to start to join. And I think this is a, a huge movement. I think that the people are rising up and they're saying, you know something, we don't want this anymore. And I think the central bankers, I think they're nervous. I think there was an article that was released that the central bankers, they're nervous about their independence, that governments, the people, they're questioning the independence. Just like Trump is questioning the Fed and contradicting the Fed, I think this is spreading around the world. And I think they're very nervous about this. Right. The bankers are, are worried about losing power. And if they lose power, what happens? The mainstream media, you don't see the, any of this on our media anywhere. No. I mean, it's just it's just a little skirmish when in fact they're they're huge protests and like you said, several hundred thousand people. So let's move on to what is happening with Meng, who is the CFO of Huawei, and she was arrested and I, I believe Trump didn't know anything about this. Why do you think they arrested her? Uh well, let's go back first. You, you're saying Trump didn't know anything about this. That's that's what he says is that he had no idea. Mm -hmm. My question would be, I mean, it could be only one of two things. Either he knew about it and is not telling the truth or he did not, in fact, know about it. And my question would be, which one's worse? Yeah. I mean, how a how could he not know about it? It's, it seems, and how could he not know about it and Bolton did know about it? And how could it have been done exactly, the arrest done exactly the same time as their, their lunch meeting in Argentina for the G20?
Which brings up the question, Trump was working on a trade deal with Xi Jinping and this arrest happened at the same time. And some people are saying that, you know, the deep state went ahead and they arrested Meng from Huawei to try to disrupt the trade deal that Trump was trying to make with Xi Jinping. That very well could be. Uh, you need to understand the mindset of, of the Chinese people. They're very proud people. Um, and it's, it's horrendous to be shamed in public. And that's what this was, was a public shaming. Now, obviously, you have to wonder, are there going to be uh, reprisals? And I guess this morning there was an ex, uh, ex-banker. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, but you do need to look at this. It'd be like the same thing as, uh, I guess, Bill Gates or some, you know, someone like that being arrested in, say, Thailand wait, uh, and put in jail and awaiting extradition to China. I mean, this is this is really, really something big. Yeah. And, and I I would I would say that this is the biggest event on the table right now just because of the potential of what China could do. Uh, some people are saying, oh, well, you know, China will start dumping their $1.1 trillion worth of, of treasuries. And I don't really view that as a big problem because the Fed will print whatever they need to buy whatever treasuries are sold. So that's not, uh, that's not a bullet to the head. An easy bullet to the head would be step up bid on, on COMEX for contracts and then stand for delivery, not back down, not uh, allow those contracts to be EFP'd to London and say, we want our metal and we want it now. COMEX has a whopping four tons. I mean, you're not even talking four, uh, $200 million of, of registered inventory. So they, they could uncover the fractional reserve nature of the entire system with a quarter of a billion dollar trade. So what would happen to the gold market if, if they did this? I mean, you're saying if, if they went ahead and, and did this, what, what would happen? Well, in essence, there wouldn't be a gold market because there'd be no gold for sale. I mean, if it turns out that, that COMEX defaulted, who in their right mind who owned gold would sell it for any price? You'd want to wait and, and see the smoke clear and see where it settles at multiples higher than where it is now so and how would this affect the global economy then well what that would would be is it would be proof that we live in a ponzi scheme in a fractional reserve system and there's not enough reserves to meet demand um, and we're talking about in the gold market but the entire banking system itself is a fractional reserve system so confidence would break uh, you would see markets destroyed very quickly all over the world. So, so we would see markets destroyed all over the world and it would hit the United States. The United States would then... Uh, it would hit the. It would hit not just the United States, it would hit the entire Western world. The entire Western financial system would be hit by that because the entire Western financial system relies on the dollar for what, 60% uh, of central banking reserves. And it would lay bare the fact that the entire system is fractional reserve. It would be, you could call it a, a giant margin call, but a better analogy would be, it would be a giant bank run all over the world. You know, this whole thing, I mean, when, when we're discussing this, it reminds me of what happened with uh, Khashoggi with Saudi Arabia, where Brennan and all those players were out there trying to push, you know, Trump into doing something against Saudi Arabia. And we know that Saudi Arabia, they're, you know, the hub of the petrodollar. Right. Now we see, you know, Meng from Huawei being arrested. I mean, Khashoggi was killed. And it seems like they're trying to do the same exact, or in my mind, they're trying to do the same exact thing. They're trying to disrupt the entire economic structure of the world. Well, I wouldn't use the word dis disrupt. I would use the word collapse. That's a better word. And we walked from Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia turned 
to China, turned to Russia, and started refusing to take dollars for oil, then it's completely over for the uh, for the petrodollar. Right now, the IMF is out there, and they're saying that the U.S. economy is going to slow next year. And what's very interesting is that the mainstream media, which normally we don't see this, but all of a sudden they're coming out with article after article after article about there is a coming recession. Now, this is in the op they're completely in the opposite direction of what Trump is reporting, where he's showing the normal unemployment, stock market, GDP numbers, and the rest. So why are they on opposite sides here? Well, it's it's a function of, as we just talked about, it's a function of, if you want to call it the deep state, uh, trying to take the system down. They're, they're See, trying to take the system down now so that there's no way uh, you know, the blame gets put on Trump and there's no way Trump can get reelected. Uh, Dave, I want to go back just a second to the, uh, the importance of this arrest, the Chinese. Okay. Uh, the most important thing in my mind, the world was, has already for several years been moving away from dollars. Uh, there have been lots of deals, trade deals made over the last uh, year, two years, three years that did not include dollars. What what this really brings forth is how did they track what what this woman did? This is a Chinese citizen from a Chinese corporation. Why does she have to obey U.S. law? What U.S. laws pertain to her? I mean, we can't pass laws in Congress that that pertain uh, to citizens of other nations. True. So. The way it was, the way what she did or what they did, uh, you know, had dealings with Iran and, and broke those sanctions, that was done. It was followed and tracked by the SWIFT system. So the reason this is so important is China already has a SWIFT alternative up, uh, ready and, and running. So the, the, the biggest weapon, if you will, financial weapon is the dollar, is the SWIFT system. And weaponizing the SWIFT system was a huge mistake because the world could just switch over to the Chinese system. And where does that leave the U.S.? Not just the Chinese, but Russia has their own payment system. But Europe is designing their own. So all these countries or multiple countries, they're all designing a payment system outside of the U.S. payment system. Exactly. And this speeds that up and it calls further into question. Why Why would we want to use the SWIFT system when we can use something else? You, since you're bringing up Meng again and, and, and the arrest and, and they're holding her, and of course, she's a Chinese citizen. I'm surprised that China, I mean, I haven't heard anything yet, hasn't stepped up and said, you know something, we want her back. You cut out for a minute there. Can you repeat oh. that? I, I'm surprised that China, and I haven't heard it as of yet, why China isn't demanding the CFO should be brought back to China. They haven't demanded that as of yet, have they? Well, yeah, they called in the Canadian ambassador. They called in our ambassador and behind closed doors, you could pretty much bet they demanded this woman to be returned. She's also a very high ranking member of the Communist Party. Yeah. So, so I mean, this is not going to go. Uh, there will be retaliation unless they release her. And the retaliation will be, in, in my mind, uh, it'll be financial and it'll be it'll be. A devastating retaliation. Yeah, and, that, and and when you say this, that's why in my mind, I'm thinking if Trump was in the middle of making this great deal with China, there's no way you know, he would do that. There's yeah, it, there's no it, way if he's negotiating with Xi. There's I I believe he truly did not know, and that's obviously concerning because how does he not know that this is happening while he's trying to cut a deal? Right. I mean, this would not help his deal <laughs> at all. No, not at all. So let me move on to the Fed. Now, the Fed is supposed to raise rates again this December, and the mainstream media is out there talking about, you know, recession. I mean, with the Fed raising the rates right now and one in December, maybe they'll do it again next year. Do you feel that 
by the Fed raising the rates, they are destroying the economy? Well, they've already inverted the yield curve. So a recession is pretty much baked in the cake. And the fact that we have so much debt everywhere, whether it be consumer debt, corporate debt, uh, state or, or federal debt, recession at this point is not going to, there's no way it can be a garden variety recession. This is the biggest credit bubble in the history of history. How do you expect it to unwind? I mean, credit bubbles in the past, which were much, much smaller, ended up in financial panics. This is going to be the financial panic of all time. And what's very interesting about this, you mentioned Q before being on the vests of uh, the, the French people. Q actually uh, posted something about the Fed where it said the president-elect knows that the Fed is trying to raise rates, bring them up and increase them, I think March 2019. And Q was talking about there's going to be a restructuring of the Fed coming up. Do you think this, I mean, and we also know that Trump has Andrew Jackson hanging on his wall. Right. I mean, th do you think this is the ultimate plan is to take this, the central bank, the Fed, and maybe nationalize it or take it over or destroy it? I, I think that very well could be. Um, in my opinion, had Hillary won, we would have already collapsed. The Fed would have raised rates harder, faster, pulled the props out. The system would have collapsed. Uh, at, at this point, Powell was chosen by Trump. Yeah. And I, I don't think uh, President Trump chose Powell and then Powell all of a sudden went on his merry way, raising rates, trying to, uh, trying to torpedo the system. It's my belief. First off, we believe there's going to be two resets. And, and when you're talking about a reset, you're talking about a new system coming forward. If, in fact, that's the case, how do you how do you create or launch a new system? The answer is you have to destroy the old system. So it, it very well may be that, uh, you know, Paul's playing a role here in popping the bubble, the credit bubble. Then we have a reset and we believe the first reset will probably include uh, the SDR, which the SDR is is no better than dollars simply because it's a it's a basket of bad currencies. They're all fiat currencies. None of them have any backing whatsoever. It's the second reset. Once that fails is where we believe that uh, gold will come back into the system It'll be marked up multiples so that central banks uh, have capital, real capital, that they can lend off of. And and on top of that, uh, gold coming back into the system marked up at much higher levels uh, would back currencies on a ratio basis. Now, some people or a lot of people say, oh, well, there's not enough gold in the world to back currencies. Well, that's correct at this price. It depends on what you price gold at. If you had gold priced at $100,000 an ounce or, or pick a number, I don't know what the number is. Uh, but if you had gold at many multiples of what it is right now, there'd be plenty of gold. So you're saying two resets. Now, the first one you said is going to be the special drawing rights. Right. Uh, that's from the IMF, right? That's Now, the second reset, do they get rid of the SDR? Well, I think the, the SDR simply fails because it's, as I said, it's a, it's a basket. That system fails and it'll probably fail due to lack of confidence. And once it does fail, is gold then going to be the, I guess, the, the, the backstop for fiat currency or is it just going to be you know held to build confidence like china and russia right exactly. now it'll be held it'll it'll back currencies on a ratio basis it will not be convertible so in other words you, you won't be able to take your your fiat currency uh bring it into your bank or central bank and get gold for it that's not what's going to happen because anytime a currency is convertible it gets converted 
I mean, history shows us that every fiat currency or every currency that was was backed by gold, uh, if it's convertible, it does get converted. I mean, that's why FDR took us off the gold standard and why Nixon in 71 shut the gold window because the dollar was convertible and France and other nations were converting their dollars into gold. Let me back up for a sec. With this reset, if uh, the, the way Q is you know, telling us that there's going to be a restructure in this system, are, is, do you think that Trump, they're trying to make it as less painful as possible when the system comes down? I mean, let's say Clinton was uh, president or somebody else was president. Do you think the central bank would care where they just dropped the economy? No, it would have, and been, just... it would have been Max Payne. Uh, this time around, I mean, since Trump has won, if the Fed does go away, they need to be blamed for the last hundred years. They need to be blamed for the credit bubble. The Fed did it. They need to take the blame for it. And I think that's what is being set up right now. Yeah, and that's why I, when you look at what Trump tweets out, he says, you know, if the economy fails, right. it's the Fed's fault. Right, exactly. And it looks like he's setting that up. Exactly. So last time we were on, uh, we this was before the midterms, and we talked about, you know, the declassification. We talked about arrests. And here we are after the midterms. Right. And we have not seen, you know, those individuals that everyone wants to see arrested, arrested. Clint, I mean, a lot of them are now, you know, involved in testifying in hearings like Comey just did one. We have Huber, Clinton coming up. Do you think we're going to see the D-class? Do you think we're going to still see arrests? Yeah, I do. Uh, first off, the executive order that, that Trump signed back in, what was it, uh, just about a year ago, December 21st or 23rd of last December, does not take effect until January 1 this coming month, January 1 of 2019. Uh I had a discussion about this last night. If you think about the FISA warrants that were used against Trump for the, you know, for the phony uh, Russian investigation, who has had the power for the last two years to present uh, FISA applications to judges? Who's had the power? Uh, in other words, you know, who, who within, uh, DOJ, FBI, etc., for the last two years has been able to uh, use FISA warrants, use the NSA, use the tools that had been used in the past to basically follow every single conversation that the, let's call them traders, that the traders have had for the last, call it year and a half. I mean, every email, every phone call, every text, even uh, Xbox conversations, these have all been tracked. And it just seems to me that the left was very, very, very sloppy while Obama was president. And they were sloppy because they assumed that Hillary was going to become president. And if Hillary became president, none of it would ever see the light of day. So now over the last year and a half, I, I think we're going to find that they they were again coming forth of treason, pedophilia, you name it. And I, I think they weren't really worried about how sloppy they were, like you said, right. because they thought, you know, no one is ever going to come in here exactly. and find any of this stuff. Exactly. And that's why I think it's very funny because when Trump came into office, I mean, they were all saying that he's a racist and, and you know, making up all these different words that he was. But that was cover because they knew why he was there. They knew that he was going to be going after all this information. Right. And that's really what they're worried about. Exactly. So how corrupt do you think government is? I mean, we just talked about a reset in the economy. <laughs> <laughs> how how corrupt do you think government is? I mean, it just can't be these couple of players. Oh, no. It, it, it goes very deep. It goes all the way to the top. Uh, I mean, obviously, look, j just take Hillary, for example. I mean, Uranium One, you, you're, you're doing a pay-for-play 
for 20% of America's uranium. I mean, it's, you're asking how, how dirty, how corrupt. I mean, you might as well uh, call us Sodom and Gomorrah. So, I mean, when you think about it, when they keep bringing up the term Russian collusion, wasn't it really Hillary, exactly. Mueller? Wasn't that really the Russian collusion? Yes, absolutely. And it's that's already, that's easily proven. And it w I believe it will be proven. So, so far, Mueller has been in office and he hasn't found anything. There's no Russian collusion. I mean, he has, you know, people that lied, but Comey has been testifying and he's been lying through his teeth. Right. Uh, many other people have lied, but, you know, they don't bring charges up against them. Well, and that's and, the only thing that he's charged anyone for is lying. Right. He's got three. What, Papadopoulos, uh, Flynn's not going to be, not going to serve any time. Right. Manafort and, uh, and Cohen. So they lied. The guy's going to get 40 years in jail for lying. I mean, right. I don't even know why these guys even answered anything. You just say, you know, I want a lawyer and um, I take the Fifth Amendment. End of story. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's what they should have done. Yes. But who knows what the how the questions were asked? How do you know, you know, where the said the whole setting was? We have no clue of how all this was being done. So maybe they thought they were just, you know, just being questioned and it wasn't really part of an investigation or something like that. Well, we'll, we'll find out shortly, but I mean, there's stories out there that Mueller has been flipped and that's a possibility. Well, what's very interesting is that, uh, Trump, he's been tweeting out like crazy against Comey, against Mueller, against Clinton. And I do believe this is on purpose to get the public used to what is coming and continually yeah. bringing it up. And it's, it's also, uh, probably being used to create conversations amongst them that can be viewed, that can be, be recorded by NSA, by, you know, recorded by uh, the DOJ, FBI, via FISA warrants. So I think he's stirring the pot on purpose. Uh, the, the tweet that he put out, what was it, two weeks ago, he, he forwarded the, the tweet. I first thought it was a joke. You know, I just thought it was a cartoon and didn't pay attention to it until I found out that President Trump actually forwarded that tweet of, so now that the uh, Russia collusion has been proven false, right? when do the trials for treason begin? And you have to believe that that's not an idle threat. It, that, no. that's, that's my opinion. And and he also tweeted out that picture of all the players, right. Obama, yeah, behind bars, right. And and just the other day, they added Brennan to that picture, right. He was the only one that was missing. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, he's projecting out there saying this is what's going to happen here. Well, this is what should happen here. And hopefully, after January, we start to see things really accelerate, and we start to see the indictments open up. Hopefully. After, you know, Clinton, if she ever does testify under oath um, about the email case, uh, you know, hopefully they catch her. In she doesn't some type even of have to testify. All they have to do is, is dig into the Clinton Foundation. And I mean, that they don't even have the proper paperwork from day one. And how about the two uh, airplane loads of boxes that went from Little Rock to the FBI? That was about a month, month and a half ago. You remember that? Yes, I do. And what, I, I'm a, what was in that? Well, I, you know, don't, I think we'll find out. I think so. So where do you think we are going from here with the economy? I mean, I mean, right now, Q has given us the March 2019 date for the next Fed increase of interest rates, saying that they're going to try to bring down the economy. I mean, do you think... That's like a, a certain point that we should be looking at where the economy starts to come down, arrests are being made, all of it happening at the same time. Well, it's not the economy. It's the markets. It's, it's, the, and it's not so much the stock markets. It's the credit markets. And if you look all over the world, uh, liquidity is very tight. We have, uh, we're looking at inverted yield curves. 
And it's important to understand that in the past, there have been recessions without inverted yield curves, but there's never been an inverted yield curve not followed by a recession. So it's all about the credit markets and rates are going up into uh, the most heavily leveraged system in all of history. And it, call it the pinprick. I mean, higher rates is is going to going to basically expose the weaker credits and it'll go right up the food chain from the weaker credits to the strongest credits. I mean, look at GE, look at Deutsche Bank. Those are each one of those are systemic on their own. You could have neither of those two go under and it looks very, very likely that they will both go. There's just too much debt and the debt is not repayable in current currency terms. So the only thing that can be done is you have a, a mass default and a reissuance of uh, if, if the currencies were to stay, the currencies have to be devalued. So it's, it's really it's like a, a deflation and a hyperinflation at the same time. It's a currency event and it's going to feel like hyperinflation. But the, the defaulting, the destruction of the credit that's been built up is a deflationary event. Do you think, do you think that this um, collapse, this transition is going to be a chaotic transition or collapse of the economy? Or do you think that Trump is going to try to stabilize it as best they possibly can to make it easier for people? What, how do you think this well, is going to play they out? Can make it, they can try to anything they want to try to stabilize it and make it the best they can. But when you're talking about a credit system as large as it is and oversized as it is today, with interest rates rising, liquidity falling, you're going to have major disruptions in the credit market up to and, and I think better than a coin flip chance that credit markets actually seize up what should have happened in 2008 or what was going to happen I think it's going to happen in spades this time around. And we've talked about this or I've, I've talked about this uh, many times in the past. Distribution will not occur if credit markets collapse. And what I'm saying here is your Walmart, your grocery store, your gas station, et cetera, et cetera, are going to be cleaned out of product and without credit distribution to restock the shelves is not going to happen. So you're talking about a major disruption. Is it two weeks, two months, six months? I, I don't know. But you you as uh, as an individual need to be prepared to go it on your own for however long this is going to last. Yeah, I agree with you. Bill, thank you very much.